So when I do works, my interest is, is also like in, in taking a methodology and trying to create a variation on it for myself. So it's really about <clears throat> trying to understand a context before making anything. So what kind of relationship uh, do the people who live that, that period, what kind of relationship do they have with that period now? And, and what kind of projection or reconciliation can we do with this past? Hello and welcome. My name is Christina Nord. I'm the head of the Berlinale Forum, an independent section of the Berlinale run by the Arsenal Institute for Film and Video Art. It is my great pleasure to welcome Vincent Mason, the director of Just a Movement. Hello, Vincent. Hello, Christina. It's, It's a pleasure to meet you. How are you? Fine. Are you in Brussels? Yeah. I see. Well, I have a couple of questions for you. Some of them are a little bit more general and some of them are a little bit more specific. I'd like to start with uh, the questions that are a little bit more general. And the first one would be, what is your film about? And if you could please describe it in two sentences, I guess that's quite a task. Um, if you could describe it in two sentences, that would be wonderful. Just a movement is on one hand, a, a, I would say a portrait of, a, of an African Marxist militant. And on the other hand, it's, it's an essay film about uh, um, Jean-Luc Godard La Chinoise as a sort of a, a reprise, if you want, a sort of variation on La Chinoise, which is a very important film uh, in the, that was shot in 1967. Mm -hmm. And how did the idea come up? Um, especially the idea to combine the two threads you just mentioned? Well, originally, the, the, I, was, um, I fell upon a, a picture uh, where Omar Blondin Diop, the, the Marxist militant, uh, was reading. Um, actually, that's the image which is on the poster behind me. He's reading um, International Situationist, a, a magazine that was published by a, a revolutionary group And I'm, I've been interested in the connection between this European, let's say, constellation and their uh, African, let's say, uh, connection. And I worked on this topic in five or six years ago for another film called One to Three, where I actually researched this connection in Congo. And when I was researching actually this, um, this connection, I stumbled onto this picture where Omar was reading this magazine And Omar being from Senegal, and uh, uh, I was interested in the fact that maybe there was also a connection between the international situationist and Senegal. And Omar happened to be uh, someone who played his own role of a militant in a film by Jean Godard called La Chinoise in 67. And that's how actually I started to be interested in, in, the, in the character. Just two years before, the family had uh, claimed uh, and asked for the reopening of the, of the case that was linked to his, uh, his death uh, in the 70s. So I, I understood that there was still something really uh, vivid in Senegal and very painful um, about the morning, uh, a morning that could not have really happen. And uh, so as a family was really fighting for the reopening of the case, I found that there was something really uh, actually uh, important and um, actual, let's say, something that was really connected with the present and that this was a story that needed maybe to, to be re researched a little bit further. So that's how it started. Mm -hmm. Film is something you do together with uh, other people. Um, it's a collective work um, and maybe you would like to mention if a couple of the people you worked with um, um, the people who made, who helped you to um, make this film come into the world. So it's the it's a, it's the third time I think uh, that I work with my crew. So it's it's also a story that that started in Kinshasa, and now we know each other quite well. Uh, I think we've been working also on three different films, so they know me and and. Uh, the DOP is Vincent Pincars, uh, Vincent Pincars. Uh, the, the audio engineer is, is also really important in the process because he's uh, on the set, but he's also uh, mixing 
and doing the sound, the sound design, let's say, or like working with the musician. He was also with me in studio uh, for the improvisation with the musician, um, Laszlo Umbreit. And I would say also a very important um, collaborator for this film is Simon Arazi, uh, he's the editor of the film. And that was really also the first time I worked with, with Simon, but uh, very, very pleased of, uh, of uh, what we managed to do and what he managed to uh, bring as ideas also in the editing of the film. So he deserves a special mention. And then I would say, uh, the, because maybe what is very important also in the making of the film is how the family actually uh, welcomed us and, and really like opened doors for us without without, you know, Omar's brother being really like supportive of the film, um, it would have been impossible, of course, to, to, to do it. Mm -hmm. I perceive your film as being very rich in layers. Um, you use uh, a lot of sources, um, you, lose, you use a lot of material, you have a lot of reference points. Um, so it's really a lot of material. How did you manage to give it a structure? What were your thoughts, your ideas on um, creating the structure for the material you had got, gathered? It's, it's very much a, a, a montage film, of course. You know, it's really much... A, um, basically, there was really like this, this, this uh, very clear idea from the start that on one hand, we would have... Um, people who really were close to Omar and who can tell us about who he was and what kind of relationship they had with him. What is really striking, of course, is, is uh, there are very few images, moving images of Omar. And moving images from Omar are the ones that are um, in, the, in, the, in La Chinoise uh, by Jean-Luc Godard. Ce que la mort de Staline nous a rendu, c'est le droit de faire le compte exact de ce que nous possédons, d'appeler par leur nom et notre richesse et notre dénuement, de penser et poser à haute voix nos problèmes et d'engager dans la rigueur une véritable recherche. What is very interesting with Omar is uh, if you dig a little bit, because he died when he was really young, he was only 26, right? To, to see that he's actually, uh, you could say, connected on one way to the Nouvelle Vague by La Chinoise. He's, he's uh, connected to, let's say, the experimental co-op movement, uh, another type of avant-garde through Simon Artok and this little film that is called actually Soul in a White Room. And he's connected, let's say, to third cinema through Medondo. So for me, it was interesting to see that for each of them, he actually, I wouldn't say he represented something, but he actually connected with each of that, uh, let's say, each of that, uh, each, each of those um, experimental or um, avant-garde filmmaking. And Omar himself, for example, wrote an essay, yeah, I think it was in 69, uh, about Chelsea Girls by Warhol. Mm -hmm. And this text remained sort of one, probably one of the best uh, texts on, on, this, on this film. Uh, so who knows, you know, maybe he would have become a film critic or maybe he would have become himself a filmmaker. Uh, because in the end, after his, his let's say, militant years, uh, he was very much interested in, in art. And, and, and so I think that one possibility is that he would have been interested in, in, in joining maybe also the avant-garde in Dakar, because he was also very connected to what happened after he died. Mm -hmm. I'd like to sort of like focus for a moment on La Chinoise and the way you work with uh, La Chinoise, um, the reprise you, you, you mentioned. Um, you also mentioned the vivid scene of uh, intellectuals in Dakar 
And one of the most outstanding figures of this intellectual scene is Felvin uh, Saar, who is reenacting um, a, a scene from, from La Chinoise. And maybe you could say a couple of words about um, why Felvin Saar, why the reenactment of this scene? So the whole film of La Chinoise is basically like five or six guys uh, spending their holidays in an, in an apartment in a very bourgeois apartment in Paris and, and like uh, thinking about how uh, how they can uh, make the revolution happen and somehow and how they connect with Maoist ID uh, in that period in, in France. So there's a very strong connection with Maoism and with a very strong projection onto what China could mean for uh, revolution and for changing society and transforming the world. I was very much um, interested in the structure uh, that is also a very strange structure for a film because you have a very long scene in this film, I think it's 14 minutes, of a scene that is shot in a train where um, um, a philosopher who was teaching at Nanterre at that time, Francis Janson, um, and who was very much connected with uh, the FLN, the Front de Libération uh, Nationale uh, for Algeria, so it was actually um, committed to support the, the, the struggle for, uh, um, uh, for independence in uh, Algeria. Um, he's, he's talking in this train with uh, his students, uh, the actor who, who is actually uh, playing the role of a student of, of philosophy also, so playing her own role and who happened to be uh, Anne Wiemski, who was actually the, the partner of Godard in, in real life. So we, we have this very long conversation that is very much documentary uh, and it's completely breaking Godard's film, uh, and it, but it also brings a lot of uh, elements to understand why these young students want to go for violence and, and, and actually commit, commit an attack. I have a lot of pain when I pass... when I pass... vers the Grand Theater, when I see the Museum of Civilization, when I hear that the French speak of restitution, J'ai lu quelque part en fait que tu que tu travailles quelque part dans ce projet de restitution. Est-ce que en fait quel est le sens de de ce musée de ce musée aujourd'hui? Est-ce que ça a un sens pour les jeunes? En fait, ce n'est pas tant le musée en tant que, que édifice qui est important. Ce qui est important, c'est que la question de la restitution, c'est les questions qu'elle nous amène à nous poser. Elle nous amène à, à nous poser des questions sur notre histoire, sur le fait que une part significative de nos productions matérielles qui sont qui sont témoins de notre histoire en Afrique de notre créativité, de notre génie, de notre spiritualité ont été spoliés et amenés dans des musées en Occident. Et du fait qu'ils soient là-bas pendant un siècle a entravé la constitution de notre identité. Et ce peuple ne peut pas se construire avec la conscience de son héritage culturel. Donc, qu'est-ce qu'il fait Il grandit avec des fragilités, il grandit avec des, des déséquilibres psychiques, il grandit avec une, une conscience minorée de soi, et de son apport à la civilisation humaine et en même temps qu'on lui tient un discours du déficit, du handicap. Vous êtes des sous-développés, vous êtes des pauvres, votre, vous n'avez rien apporté d'important dans la civilisation, alors que c'est absolument faux. Et ça, c'est quelque chose d'important dans le processus de réappropriation de sa propre histoire et de réinvention de soi. Fel Winsar est un sénégalais intellectuel qui a été vraiment bien connu parce que son travail comme un essayiste, mais aussi um, world famous because uh, he and Benet Benedict Savoie have uh, been the, um, commissioned by the President uh, Macron to report on the on the restitution of uh, colonial artifacts. And uh, this report has had a tremendous uh, consequence and was a sort of a earthquake in the in the museum world. Um, so his, his work is, is also very much discussed because he has written some essay like Afrotopia, who were really important for a lot of uh, African uh, 
thinkers and artists. And uh, when, when I was thinking about uh, a variation on this scene that is in the Godard film, uh, I really thought that putting into relationship one militant, uh, Malal, uh, uh, who is playing uh, his own role as a, a very important activist in the, in the civil revolution in Senegal who took place in, in, in 2012. Uh, having Malal uh, as a, an activist and an artist, a rapper, discussing with an intellectual would be interesting. And so uh, I, I propose uh, uh, Felwin uh, to kind of reenact uh, a position, but not a role. So the position is, is, is the one of, of course, of the intellectual. But um, it's, a very, it's a very interesting scene. I, it was so interesting uh, that I thought it should be a film uh, as such because it's a 45 minute discussion and we kept uh, eight minutes. So it's not a 14 minute discussion as in the Godard, we kind of uh, cut it down to, to eight minutes. But it's a very interesting discussion because they, they really speak about uh, why a museum would be important in Senegal today. Um, there's a very important dynamic that has to do also with the transmission uh, and by reclaiming your artifact and being able to show them and to, and to work with young people, young generation. And there's a very, it's, and there's a very interesting, I think, uh, um, discussion about the reappropriation of, uh, let's say the creative, uh, the artists and the militants and how, how people in power uh, uh, try to recuperate actually struggles and, and a spokesperson. So when I do works, my interest is, is also like in, 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 in taking a methodology and trying to create a variation on it for myself. So it's really about <clears throat> trying to understand a context before making anything. And you cannot understand a context from the past if you don't deal with, uh, I wouldn't say, uh, uh, this past in the present. So what kind of relationship uh, do the people who lived that, that period, what kind of relationship do they have with that period now? And, and what kind of projection or reconciliation can we do with this past? Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Vincent. Um, it was great talking to you. Super insightful. I'm very much okay. looking forward to continuing the conversation. And um, yeah, um, wish you a great day and see you soon. Hmm? Yeah, thanks a lot. Take care. See you. Bye.